when the president of the ADB, uh, Takehi Nagao, came to Myanmar in the mid-2016. So he told media uh, to give Myanmar uh, between 150 to 350 US dollar millions starting from this year. So how is going on? The, what is the proceeding uh, in uh, the new government at the, uh, this year? Right. Well, I think that indeed we're very much on track for that commitment, that we are, we are setting aside about $400 million a year of, of, our, of our finance to, to invest in, in, in Myanmar. So we're very much on track to the commitment that President Nakao made when he visited last year. Uh, as far as what this visit does to help move that along, is that we've articulated this new country partnership strategy, which, as I said, will go to our board uh, at, at the end of this month. And so this was a really good time of vis to visit, to have, have final discussions on, on the direction of that partnership strategy, number one. Number two, we also focused a lot of our discussions on implementation of the existing set of projects that have already been approved and are, are underway. Because it's not just the commitment of additional finance that's important, but it's also actual execution and implementation of the set of projects and programs that exist now. And so trying to smooth out the implementation and making sure that that's going well is critically important to address the, the real challenges that this economy faces. Mm. ADV is again within five years in Myanmar. You have been in the green separately in two governments, former government and the present, present government. So how do you feel the communication on former government and present government implementing your projects in Myanmar? Well, again, I think that we, we see, you know, certainly consistency across the different governments in terms of a focus on the challenges that, 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 that the economy faces and that the understanding of the role that, that Myanmar, the government of Myanmar has in terms of providing for, uh, for its people. And so that's very, very consistent. And as far as the partnership that we have with, with, with the to two governments, it's, they're very consistent in terms of the areas of focus that our institution has. Um, and so I think that we've seen a lot of consistency in terms of that partnership, and I expect that we'll see that kind of consistency going forward. So the world's financial landscape is shifting, notably with the growing importance of Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, AIIB, and its focus on China, Asia, and Europe. How is the ADV adjusting to date? Well, we welcome the arrival of the AIIB on the international uh, financial institution scene. Uh, we released a report last week um, that estimates the infrastructure investment needs between now and 2030 are, are um, $26, billion, $26 trillion, or $1.7 trillion every year. ADB supplies between you know, 17 and 20 billion dollars a year. The World Bank does something similar. So that's a big gap between 40 billion dollars and 1.7 trillion dollars. So there's a huge space for other institutions to come in and help spur and help invest in, in infrastructure. So we think that the arrival of, of, of the AIIB is, is very positive. We have an MOU uh, now with the AIIB that articulates the partnership that we can have. We have three uh, projects that are being co-financed with the AIIB across the region, and we anticipate that those co-financing opportunities will, will increase um, over the course of the coming years. So we think that its arrival is very, very welcome. China is powering the its projects one by one road, a grand project that underlines a gradual shift in power, trade and development in Asia and Europe. How do you think that? Well, as far as that, we think, again, it's, 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 it's very commendable to have articulated a, a, a large vision for, for the kind of infrastructure investment that's necessary for Asia to continue along its path of growth. Asia has been, for the last number of years, the driver, global driver, global engine of, of, of growth. And this kind of grand vision for the infrastructure needs and articulating the kinds of linkages that are necessary in order to underpin and propel that growth going forward is again welcome. So we look forward to working with, with, with the government of, of, of China as well as with uh, other governments that are, that are participating in this in realizing a vision of a, of a fully connected uh, and fully integrated Asia.
According to the calculation of the ADV itself to Myanmar's in the sector of the road and transportation, how do you think that how much investment the Myanmar government invests in this road and transportation sector for 2020? Well, I mean, we have estimated that there's a need of a, about $120 billion of infrastructure investment in Myanmar between now and 2030. Um, so there's a huge amount of infrastructure investment that's required. And that's just in the areas of transport, uh, in the areas of telecommunications, and in the areas of, of power uh, supply and generation. So that's, and, but if you include urban infrastructure investment that's going to also be necessary, that number can easily double. Uh, so you're looking more in the, in the order of, of, of 200 to $300 billion between now and, and 2030. So there's a huge amount of investment that needs to take place in order to fully connect the country, in order to realize the inherent uh, qualities of, of Myanmar that I mentioned before that, are, that can really help drive this economy going forward. This back, this huge amount of this, the, the, the investment coming for the 2030 is a huge challenge for the government. So how does the government uh, uh, get this amount of the financing to this area? So, Well, again, part of it is going to come from engaging with partners such as the ADB. Part of it is going to, become, is going to come from uh, raising money on, on the capital markets that will allow uh, issuing bonds and other things that will allow, um, give additional revenue to, the, to the, the government that will allow it to spend. Part of it is through um, improving and, and rationalizing and, and, and streamlining the, 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 the tax system in the country that again allows, to gener allows the country to generate additional revenue to make these kinds of investments. But also, it, it's, a, it's a virtuous cycle. So the more investment that you make in infrastructure, the more economic growth you have, the more revenue you can generate for the government, which in turn it can then feed back into infrastructure investment that can create this virtuous cycle over time. So it's not saying that you need to have $120 billion today to invest in infrastructure, but over the course of the next 13 years, you need to be thinking about that kind of scale uh, in order to continue to, on this path of, of economic growth that we see today. Is there anything to which you'd like to add here? Um, not really. I think we really have an excellent partnership with, uh, with the country and the government of Myanmar. Uh, we look forward to a, a, a long and, 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 and continual engagement in this country, and we are very honored to, to be able to play a role in realizing the objectives of development in this country and we think it's really, really important and we're very optimistic about the future. All right, Stephen, very, very, thank you for sitting in the field.